Hello, my name is Swiss Bianco. In this video I will talk about the Swiss SIEG 550 system, uh, about the manual for the armorer in the Swiss military as we have it here in front of the camera. Uh, in Switzerland it's named the Sturmgewehr 90 from uh, its year as it got put into service in uh, 1990. It did follow the 1957 assault rifle that we have here, that was the SIG 510 system, uh, that we're gonna look another time on, on uh, that armor, armorer manual from the Swiss military. So what we have here is uh, the manual for the armorer in brown color. The regular manual, how to use and all that, was in a green color, like my uh, Swiss Bianco patch. was of course thinner because that was not, not uh, that much about uh, fixing the gun as in this one. So this one is, is uh, of course more interesting for the, the technical interesting interested people like myself. Uh, this is from the Swiss military, as it say. Uh, the number of the manual, what kind of item it, it uh, covers, and uh, for the armorer. This one was from 1989, and as I joined the Swiss military in 1990, of course, they did not give me the, the new military rifle because it was not ready, that came later. So I just had a bit of chance here and there to study that system one to one and of course get the manual and see how that works. Over the years I did have good experience on that rifle, on that 550 system as well as we have it here for the Swiss military. They had a lot of trouble with uh, that rifle. And uh, again, I need to hold it a bit in front of the camera, surrounding the camera. And uh, if you wanna read a page a bit closer, you simply stop the video and then read for yourself. This one is in German, again there was a version in French and Italian as well as with quite likely any Swiss manual because we had people from those parts of Switzerland as well, of course. Here we see it, the Sturmgewehr 90, the SIG 550 system, 20 round magazine, uh, the first version that they did make they had some changes by the stock and other parts also back then uh, there was still a rifle grenade that they fired with this rifle too but that did fade away quickly because this this rifle was too weak it's a fully automatic gun it's a assault rifle it's not only a semi-automatic which is not an assault rifle per definition it has a fully automatic setting and a three round burst setting as well which we'll see within this manual how that looks here we already have the first part gun is a uh, basically yeah, and white parts based on the Kalashnikov system. A little bit modernized. Uh, we have the receiver with the bottle, the bayonet holder, the flash hider. Here is the ring for the rifle grenade, the adjuster for the gas system, and this is the gas tubing with its gas with the gas, how we say that in Gastang, the, the gas uh, plunger, which has the spring, which is then connected with the, 
with the bolt carrier. So the, the first runs always have problem with this part here, the gas tubing where, where part of the gas get up into that tubing. That had a really bad corrosion. Uh, they had trouble with the with the powder that they used for the special ammunition that we that we uh, had in Switzerland, which is not a 556. It was a different version of a 556 caliber that the people, the the Swiss military people, wanna do. They got afraid about. The horror stories that they even told us in uh, 1990 in the, in the military about Vietnam that you shoot somebody with uh, with the M16 just a little bit and because that hyper velocity magical bullet of the 556 gonna overthrow and explode and god knows what else for, for a complete garbage. So the Swiss military wanna, wanna use a heavier bullet which caused all kind of trouble together with a uh, with a powder as best as I remember they did import the powder that special kind of powder so they had a heck of a lot of trouble all over with this rifle also the the buttstock did a uh, break there was a redesigning retooling on the buttstock and 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 here we see the Basically the, the part, the Verschlussträger, the part that holds the bolt, the rotating bolt a la Kalashnikov would come in here. On top is the slot for the charging handle that then would connect this part, it's the same part just the opposite side, with uh, the gas the gas uh, part that would go in front to, to make the connection that the whole rifle works. This curve here is the fully automatic curve that gives you the selective fire possibility. This lever here is just the up and down going to connect with that part here. And that of course is the, the nose that they uh, get uh, hit by the hammer as the bolt goes back. Then we have the three parts of the of the stock. The four stock, the upper part, the lower part and the bipod. A bipod was also used for the rifle grenades as in the same fashion as the 1957 rifle with the Swiss Army knife hanging but that did as I say fade away quick because the rifle did not be up to this hard use at all. So the rifle grenades that you put on the muzzle of the rifle did fade away really quick. It's a simple uh, plastic stuff that you put on. The bipod is also really, really basic, really simple. Uh, not not uh, for hard use at all, the, the bipod that uh, is not spring loaded too well. Then on the other page we see we see the folding buttstock with the hinge. As I say, there were several variants of the buttstock that they had to fix. We have the lower receiver with the, here we already see the, the hook that goes up for the fully automatic that would connect with the other page with that nose. Trigger is here. Trigger was pretty good, it's a, like a match trigger. That That is about the, the best feature of that rifle. The, pistol grip you can take off this this plate here and inside is a loader for stripper clips plastic stripper clips and uh, the the assembly here the trigger guard you can put a bit sideways for a uh, winter use that's for sure good in Switzerland to do that and uh, of course here we have the selector for uh, the safety and selector switch and the uh, prior I forget uh, it's a two hinged construction like the M16 R15 we have the front hinge and the rear hinge it's a kind of press button style like some of the Heckler & Koch similar like that and we have the other side of the lower receiver we have the bolt hold open device 
we have here that sliding sliding device for uh, prevent that the selector can go all the way down for fully automatic three round bursts so it's semi-automatic only uh, they they gonna maybe show that a bit in uh, detail as well then the 20 round magazine uh, another poor construction with those uh, knocks they have the the knocks we we all know that from heckler and koch uh, those things uh, break away pretty fast they come in the way by the magazine by the magazine uh, pocket and all that they they were always a bit of trouble uh, the Swiss military did mainly 99% only use the, the 20 round magazine for keep low profile to shoot out of a, of a trench but uh, the 30 round magazines were around as well for civilian it's a complete new magazine they did not go with uh, like with the R15 M16 system or something like that it's completely new it's a rocking system like with the Kalashnikov we have here in front front of the trigger guard the, the magazine lock it's a uh, pretty much the same like the Kalashnikov then we have the bayonet another great example from Switzerland uh, was made by Wenger and by Victorinox it was having a chisel grind only and the point was completely blunt rounded you you could not use that point at all the the steel was pretty good it was made only for a while and now it's it's uh, out of production by wenger of course anyhow they they are closed with with the uh, knives and uh, victorinox don't do that as well the whole of the Oh, that goes over the muzzle that would fit for a regular R15 M16 a Stanag version but the locking mechanism part here is completely different it's a Swiss variant so that bayonet not gonna fit anywhere and you had the sheet that was plastic with a metal frog here part on top and the main frog that you would carry this on your belt was made out of a of a plastic material as well and then later that bayonet was carried on the bag with the uh, with the gas mask so another another questionable carry method for a uh, such such a bayonet because the knife is is a tool that needs to be handy that is really for for uh, use and defend as you get out of ammunition you need that thing handy and not by the gas mask or inside or outside or whatever and especially you need a point those points were so blunt unfortunately I don't have that uh, bayonet anymore I did as the prices went up I did sell that great example of a uh, bayonet and uh, got me something that really has a point and here we see the the charger that is in the pistol grip it's a piece of plastic that uh, will not lock over the magazine like the r15 m16 version but it's pressed on by the thumb on the back side of the magazine and then the stripper comes in from top uh, stripper were in a grey plastic and uh, 10 rounds, 2 strippers, 20 rounds in the magazine, like that. Then we come to the cleaning kit. Pretty complex cleaning kit. Also uh, special tooling needed here for clean the, the gas system and all that. And uh, of course it was a caliper change from a 7.5 mm to a 5.56 millimeter so that is a thinner cleaning rod and uh, the older one for the 75 also rifle cannot be used uh, one one uh, unique part is the Laufspiegel 
part number 11 it's covered up it's basically a, a a piece of of mirror on a on a metal and a bit a a, a handle of a of a wire of a wire metal and the two boxes uh, are grease grease they did not use oil they use grease here we have the technical data and uh, of course the different ammunition that they that they use the regular ammunition Then we have the tracer. The blank firing. And we have manipulation. A solid brass one. You see always if it has like this rifling on the ammunition that is not real. It's a solid one piece, no bullet, no separation at all. And of course how it is uh, to get a thousand uh, rounds and all that. So we see this is also about general information and uh, how to load it, how to unload it, how the gun needs to be prevented that it goes on fully automatic or three round burst mode and uh, all that. It even has a one good feature it has a, it has a night vision sight a night sight I should say it's a tritium uh, two green in the diopter in the rear side and one in front fold up in front that is pretty good here we see the charger with the stripper so he presses with the thumb the charger the guide on the 20 round magazine and then drop the, the ammunition down you really need to have uh, two two hands to press the thing uh, close to the magazine it's it's not going to interlock there at all so that's negative the the US system is better and here you put two magazines together so you have 40 rounds Here we see the rifle completely taken apart for field stripping for cleaning. And they tell you you should put it down always like this. Which is a pretty good thing. There were people they grabbed the parts from, from the friends and put it together and that did not work out. Now we come to the more interesting part how the action works we see here the bottle with the bullet on top is the gas rod here that square would be where the charging handle would be go through then we have the firing pin here is the fully automatic lever in the down position already and here the trigger the trigger and the, the trigger parts that uh, create the different from uh, safety to single, semi-automatic to burst. Here is in the moment as it fires and there we see already one of the biggest drawbacks on this design. We see that spring here for the hammer that goes around over to the by the trigger that is a it's like a tension spring it's like a, a clock spring you need a tooling to wire that up that it comes to tension so the the kalashnikov system with the trigger assembly is relatively easy even the the fully automatic one even the the tantal polish one with the three round burst is still pretty pretty uh, easy to take apart and put back together compared to this you need the tooling 
so here in USA I would never buy such a such a rifle the main action of the bolt system is exactly like the Kalashnikov it's just a bit different manufactured As the magazine is empty, the bolt gonna be in the reward position. Here again we see the fully automatic lever that is here on the curve, on the curve of the bolt hanging on the, and here the rest of the hammer and the part that connect with the trigger. Here the, the safety that interacts with the trigger the safety and selector here how it is in single in semi-automatic how that fires so the technical description is pretty good how it gets goes back we see the fully automatic lever goes up the curve is here and then we have the three round burst mechanism and there was a lot of trouble too, that thing, if it got grease or if it got frozen, that did not work. We see here the trigger, we see here part of the counting mechanism, part of the counting mechanism here that is connected with the trigger. So we had the counting mechanism which is spring loaded in this slot, connecting with the trigger and with the selector of course. And the, the part here that would interact also with the hammer. So the trigger, the, the three round burst was not that reliable at all. Lots of trouble there. But it's technically interesting how, how it works. And uh, we see here. That was only part of the... Yeah, we need to go over to this side. That is uh, showing you part of the, the, the full of the, of the trigger assembly in, in a three round burst. We have here the hammer, the trigger. Then we have the side, on the side of the hammer we have that part here that lifts that part here. That is in connection with the back part which is spring loaded that counts on that part here together with counting here and the spring in here and the selector as well so and and we see that part here that i did discuss before so we see that is a is a heck of a complex thing itself